Easter is a celebration of Jesus' triumph over death. Do not be afraid, the Gospel of Mark says. He has risen. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Pope Francis says, to go to Galilee means to begin anew. It means to start again from where we began. The message of Easter is, it is always possible to begin anew. Because there is always a new life that God can awaken in us in spite of all our failures. By listening daily to His words, may God's love and guidance be more felt in your daily life. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all the day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ. Jesus. Responsorial Psalm One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate His temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. 
when Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said to this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days of wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. Today, April 29, is the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, Virgin and Doctor of the Church. She desired to go to heaven and for the popes to return to Rome. St. Peter was not martyred in Frankfurt, Germany, Alexandria, Egypt, or Jerusalem. He could have been. God in his providence wanted St. Peter's blood to spill on Roman soil so that his one holy Catholic and apostolic church would drop anchor in the then capital of the world. This does not mean that Catholicism is bound to St. Peter's Basilica and Rome in the same way that Judaism was bound to the Temple of Jerusalem. Rome does not have the same theological significance for Catholics as Jerusalem does for Jews, nor is Rome the successor of Jerusalem. Rome is not a holy city like Mecca is for the Muslims. That the primacy of the Pope over the universal church is rooted in his being a successor of St. Peter. That the primacy of the Pope over the universal church is rooted in his being the successor of St. Peter is an indisputable theological and historical fact. However, the Petrian ministry is one thing and where it is exercised is another. The location of the Petrian ministry has never had the same theological weight as the ministry itself. Peter, yes. Always. Rome, yes. So far, mostly. Today's saint was a third order Dominican, a mystic, a contemplative, and an ascetic who used secretaries to compose her letters because she could not read nor write until the last few years of her life. Yet for all, of her interior distance from the world and its concerns, St. Catherine of Siena threw herself at the feet of the Pope, then reigning in Avignon, and begged him to return to Rome. 
The Babylonian captivity of the papacy in Avignon had gone on for almost seven decades and caused grave scandal. The move to Avignon was not due to an irreversible cultural shift, such as a Muslim conquest or a disseminating plague. The popes did not abandon Rome because it was a carcass. The transfer of the papal court to Avignon, a city within the papal states, was a result of politics. It is not often that a single person can affect the course of history as much as a battle, a treaty, a council, or a council does. Incredibly, though, St. Catherine of Siena's effort to return the papacy to Rome were successful. She wrote so powerfully, spoke so passionately, and exuded such intense holiness that the Pope was overwhelmed. She also seemed to have a prophetic powers, even knowing what the Pope was thinking or had previously thought. She was frighteningly intense. St. Catherine could not be ignored. Thus, 67 years of seven French popes ruling far from Rome ended. In 1376, Pope Gregory XI abandoned Avignon and followed in the footsteps of so many medievals. He went on pilgrimage to the tomb of St. Peter, and he stayed. The eternal city was a widow no longer. St. Catherine was born the 24th of 25 children in a pious family imbued with the love of God. She eagerly drank in all that her parents poured out. She went for true gold early in life. She practiced extreme penances, eating only bread and raw vegetables and drinking only water for the entire adult life. She conversed with God, experienced ecstasies and visions, and dictated hundreds of letters and books and reflections filled with the most profound spiritual and theological insights. In 1970, she was the first lay person, the first woman to be made a doctor of the church in recognition of her profound mystical theology. Catherine died at the age of 33, worn out by penances, travel, and the burden of her involvement in so many pressing ecclesial affairs. She was canonized in 1461. Her body lies under the main altar of the Dominican Church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva in Rome. Her mummified head is found in her native Siena. Let us pray. Saint Catherine of Siena, your love of God was expressed in so many vibrant ways and in a fervent love of his church. From your exalted place in heaven, we seek your powerful intercession to make all Catholics more ardent in their love of the Trinity, of the Passion, and of the Papacy. Amen.